We can't talk about the Lance Air, Columbia, Cessna, Corvallis, that whole storyline, without going back to where it all began. And it began with a guy sitting next to me right now. Lance Nybauer started this line of aircraft back in, I guess the first one came out in 1984. Is that about right? That's right. Yeah, the 200. I want to go back farther than that because um, in looking into your background, I learned that you had a background in uh, graphic design or, or got a fine arts degree before this all started. Right. How, how did uh, the aviation side of this whole thing develop? Uh, really, it goes back to uh, uh, family. My uh, uncle and Al Myers were high school buddies. <clears throat> and, of course, Al Myers designed the airplanes, the Myers aircraft, and my uncle got them produced. And they had their little company in Tecumseh, Michigan, and we were pretty close. It was my mother's brother. Um, Ray Bessel. So we were out there all the time. And my first ride was in a Myers 200. And then later he took me up in a biplane, the OTW. And from that point on, uh, we were out there at least every other week. All right. Now, fast forward a number of years to the point in your life where you decide to get involved in manufacturing aircraft or at least facilitating home builders with kits. Uh, how did that whole process go? What influenced you to do that along the way? Well, it was actually um, my introduction to this organization called Experimental Aircraft Association. So I got into uh, EIA, and then from that, I started looking at other airplanes to build. I'm a, I'm a builder. I like building things just in general, houses, boats, planes, cars. So I ended up building a uh, plans built, a KR2. And from that, I got more and more interested, and I, I actually considered a second degree in aerospace and, and went to uh, Northrop and talked to some people there. And what I was wanting to learn was things that were not really being offered because I would have had two years of prerequisites. So I, I was impatient, and so I went to the library and, and uh, studied structures, and composites were just coming on, and I felt comfortable with composite sculpting, basically. Teamed up with some consultants, Martin Holman, for one. So that's how that whole thing got going. And I, and I had this first design that I'd worked on probably for a year and a half. I had a whole fistful of D-sized drawings. And I remember one of the EAA chapter meetings was at my house. And, and uh, I showed some of the guys the plane on the drawings. And they, they all liked it and said, boy, if, if that flies good and can look like that, it, you might have something here. So I thought, oh, heck, I'll, I'll build one, you know. And, and I just... Went off and rented a shop and built one. And um, like I say, the rest is history. <laughs> Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its V-tail design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at cirrusdesign.com. What was involved in the engineering side and making sure you had a safe thing structurally when you got to the point of building the first thing that had your name on it? Um, well, that was the consulting engineers that would, yeah. that would do all the structure. I built my first prototype with a lot of my own uh, engineering on structure, but that wasn't going to cut it if I'm going to let somebody else go in it. So we did a lot of engineering work on it, uh, all through consultants, and uh, it worked out quite nicely. It was, it was a good working relationship that went on for years and years and years. Now, a lot has happened since the first plane you put on the market in 1984. Uh, you no doubt started carving foam and, uh, and approaching it almost like a sculpture. Now everything comes out of SolidWorks or some other modeling program. Uh, what's that transition been like? Because you've seen you've seen it from start to finish in your your career so far. It is quite an evolution. Um, I, you know, I started on drawing boards, and uh, and I felt then, and I in some respects I still do, that um, there's something to be gained from it, because I could take a bunch of uh, D sheets and spread them out all over the floor and stack them in various stages of, you know, transparency and, and be able to see the relationships of one thing to another. And that helped me a lot, and I'm, I'm a visual person anyway, so I, I was comfortable seeing that, that airplane in three dimension on a sheet of paper. Some of the early engineers um, that we, I would come in contact with, it was almost as if they would have tunnel vision because they're working on a computer, which is much more accurate and, and 
has its advantages, of course, but they're they're looking at it through a uh, monocular, mm -hmm. and they see this little piece and that little piece, and oftentimes, if they're not a three-dimensional visual type, they don't really put it together. And you'd find that later when we're building a part, you find that, well, this doesn't fit to that, and they never saw that, you know. And so you have to, you know, educate them on that. And now that the the um, things like SolidWorks and Pro E and all those have gone a little bit further, and, and you're working in three dimension on the computer, um, that circumvents a lot of that. But you know, like anything else, it's it's the mindset that uh, that determines what the outcome is going to be, not really the tool so much. Integra Release 9 sets a new standard with the easiest to use pilot interface in all of general aviation. Access to any of Release 9's powerful capabilities is as simple as pressing the desired bi-directional page key. Pressing the same key in a desired direction navigates to the clearly labeled tabs with no more guessing as to what a given pilot input would do. Avidine's Integra Release 9 is the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology and the easiest to use page and tab user interface is just one of the many benefits designed to make your flying easier and safer. Lance, you have not only designed aircraft, but you've put together the wherewithal to get them into production kits and certificated. Uh, talk a little bit about the current economy and environment. Uh, I talked to some people at the reunion over at the Brasada Ranch who commented that they're sure glad that if Columbia had to go under, it happened two years ago and not now because there might not be anybody who would write a check for them right now. What about the current environment? Is this a time of great opportunity or is this a time to just kind of sit it out and see? Well, it's obviously an extremely rough um, economy with regard to aviation and most any other business realm. But I was just reading where uh, piston shipments were down 58% from this time last year. Um, Turbo props were only 13, and uh, the jets were 38. So, yeah, it's rough. It's very rough. But uh, it looks like things are starting to get better. And I don't know if we'll ever get back to the kind of activity that was being dreamed and actually being seen a little bit of where they were going up by four, five, six, seven hundred every year. There's been a little bit of a wake-up call. I think that relationship of the three different segments is probably going to maintain its uh, current relationship, and but I think they'll all start moving up a little bit. But it's going to be a while. Let me make this more personal. Uh, has the aviation world heard the Lance, uh, the last of Lance Nybauer? <laughs> well, you know, I, I never say never, and uh, I'm never really done. I'm, I'm always uh, uh, fiddling with something or other, you know. I mean, I, I, just, I just do it because I love doing it. Um, I like to comment that the first 10, 12 years in the business, I was at the shop, I mean, literally seven days a week, 10, 12 plus hours every day. And I'm happy to say I never once worked. It wasn't work. It was it, it was what I did. It was what I loved to do. And even though I've been retired technically for the last three years, I still work on airplane designs you know, because I like to do it. So will I be in that frying pan again? Huh? You never know. <laughs> Well, Lance, thanks for filling in some of the uh, early tiles in our uh, mosaic of the history of this aircraft line, and uh, best of luck to you, whatever you decide to do in the future. Well, thank you very much. Good talking with you.